So in this demonstration, we're going to show you some tricks with select single. So the default way that people use select single is they bring it into the page, go to add option and add options. Now, if you're working with a business object or a SAS REST service, there shouldn't be any issues. But if you're working with some random REST service and you're trying to populate it, one of the things you're likely to run into is that when you pop up the list with values, it's only going to fetch about um, 15 records over here, and you can't go beyond that. And the reason is because this list of value, the select single, is coming from a service data provider. Right? So the service data provider that we're defining over here, or what's defined for us by the little quick start, is expecting the backend to know how to do pagination. So it's not going to fetch all the records at once. It's going to try and fetch them as needed as you scroll down. If your backend is not able to do pagination, you're going to run into issues here. So one way around it is to fetch all the records in one go and populate it. And while I'll show you how to do this, I'll also cover one other thing that you might want to do, which is if this type of list is going to appear in multiple pages in your application, it's likely that every time that you go to one of those pages, you're going to refetch the list. So it's a network traffic. And in some cases, if this list doesn't change too frequently, it would be more efficient to just have this list fetched once. So let's do that. To do that, we're going to go to our application and we'll do the fetching of the list over here at the application level. So we're going to define a new variable first. Um, we'll call this one countries ADP. And unlike an SDP, this one is an array data provider that we're creating here. And in an array data provider, we have full control over when we're fetching data over there and how we're fetching it. In our case, this is going to be the countries ADP. It needs to be based on an item type. So let's create a type here. We'll create it based on the endpoint that we have over here. So our endpoint returns an array, um, and in there we have the fields that we want to show. So, for example, we can pick the name and the flag and a few other stuff. Um, each one of the fields that you pick in here is a field that you can have access to when you select something in the list. So I'll show you that in a second. And let's call this our country type. So this is our country type. Now, one thing to note, our country type was created as an array. And we don't actually need an array as the type. We need a simple object. So one way to get around it is to go to the code for your type and just remove the square brackets here that indicate an array and make sure that your JSON is a valid one after you do this. And then when you go to the type, you can see it's now a simple object. So now we can go back to our variable set it to be based on the new type we created, the country type, with the ID would be the alpha2 code. So that's the key attribute. Uh, that's the value that is going to be returned from our list. Now let's go and actually fetch data into this list. And to that, we're going to create an event listener here. And we'll create an event listener on the VB enter. And this was going to be a new uh, action chain. I will call it populate lists, for example. Okay, so let's go over to our populate list over here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to call a REST endpoint. This is the REST endpoint that fetches all the countries in our case. Okay, we know it returns all the records. And then we're going to assign this into our ADP. So our call REST returns this array of data and our country's ADP has an array called data with the same names for fields. So just map one array to the other and make sure to reset the target to empty. So when it's executing, first it's emptying the list and then it's populating it. All right, so now we have values in our ADP when we run the application. So we can go back to a page in our application and we're going to bring in a new select single, put it down here, and we're going to use the data tab here to map the data to come from our country's ADP. Okay. 
the item text is going to be the name that we're going to show here, the label. So in our case, it's the name attribute. Again, the name over here is coming from the type that you defined over here. So it needs to be one of those fields over here. All right, so now if we look at the live view, we can see the countries and you can see we're seeing all the countries now as we scroll down. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to assign the value from this list into some variable. So let's create a variable, selected country, and click create. Okay, and um, let's add an input text into our page and map the data for this input text to come from the selected country. All right, so now if we select the country over here, we'll get the code down here. Okay, um, if we, by the way, if we start to type here, you can see we're filtering all the values. This is on the client filtering, so it automatically filters everything and brings you the right values back. Now, what if I need to get some other information about the country? So not just the, um, the uh, name of the country or the code, for example, what if I want the capital? So we know that this list already pop is populated with the data about the capital. How do we get to it? This is where the value item can help you. So the value item is an object uh, of the selected value, and it has the key, the data, and the metadata. So I'm going to use the data here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable. We call it country data, for example, and this is going to be of type any, okay? Or it can also be of type object. So let's do an object in our case. Uh, actually, let's do any, it would be faster. So now that we have the country data, this is an object that would have inside it all the information we need um, inside the data part, right? So remember, I'll just remove this for a second there's a data part to this object. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another input text down here. Okay. So now if we select a value here, okay, and we then go to this field, we can use our country data, which is an object. Inside it, we can get the data. For example, we can get the capital. Okay, and we get the capital over here. So if we now go over, for example, pick up um, United States, so United States of America, we get the capital to show up here. So this is how you can access additional data in your list. And those are some tips on how to use lists um, across your application. Again, the same ADP can be used in any other page in your application. We're only going to fetch it once when we load the application itself.